Palantir, Palantir, Palantir. In the past few days, we had a taste of the good life. We had a great earnings call. We had great numbers. The stock went on a rampage. We saw a new 52-week high yesterday at $22 per share. And the stock is currently up 162% of the past year. Now, just yesterday, we heard that Palantir signed another new contract worth $650 million. Absolute insanity. But for Palantir, it's almost a daily thing right now. Now, obviously, a lot of people will be taking profits over the next few days, and I expect some correction. But as a long-term investor, I honestly could not care less. What I'm more interested about is the amount of Palantir haters that are not having a good week so far. And just to give you kind of a taste, here's a few. I have now sold out of Palantir in every single one of my portfolios, and I am now an ex-shareholder of Palantir. Palantir Technologies, this is a company in which I criticized from the stock price because that other guy on YouTube was talking the world of it. Stock price is currently eight. I haven't looked. So in past videos, I have shown that I believe Palantir is interesting at $5. But as you can see, our high price of 560 is getting pretty close to where we want to be. Oy vey. Now, on the other hand, Jim Cramer actually said that this stock is a buy, which in itself, with his whole reverse Midas thing, might actually bring down the stock back to $7. So that's actually pretty scary. Now, uh, jokes aside, I think this is the beginning of the Tesla day for Palantir, the day in which everything changes as far as Wall Street perception, as far as market sentiment, as far as analysts. At some point, Tesla went from being this immature company that's going to be taken over by the Germans to a real thing. Same thing happened with NVIDIA, with their AI moment. I believe this is the beginning for Palantir, but I'm not here really to talk about that. In this video, I want to give you my price target for this stock right now, based on my own DCF, and for the next five years, based on the bearish, middle ground, and bullish expectation. And obviously, these price targets will be the most accurate I have ever put out because they're going to be based on the numbers that we just saw come out of the earnings. So before we talk about that, we have to talk about the excitement right now on the street. There's a lot of new price targets coming out from sell side analysts, you know, with the exception of Dan Ives, I honestly don't trust any of them. But you see right now, Jeffries has Palantir $22, City at 20, Bank of America at 24, Wedbush, Dan Ives has it, of course, at 30 because he's the only guy who actually gets it. Uh, the crazy part about Palantir is that if you understand what AIP is going to do to the market, you understand that this is just a start for Palantir. I'm not saying the stock is going to go straight from 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 to 100. That's not what I'm saying. It's going to be a bumpy ride. But I'm saying that Palantir is now on the cusp of taking over another industry which nobody can compete with. You look at these current price levels and you're like, oh my God, this thing is discounted as hell. Now, obviously, obviously there's going to be a bumpy ride. Palantir isn't going to go straight from 20 to 100 to 500. It's not how it works. In fact, I think that a lot of people will take profits, especially over the next few days. There's going to be a correction. No stock ever goes up 30% and stays there. But I'm personally not selling a single share. For the simple reason, I'm not a trader. You know, I just don't believe in the idea of timing the market. You can get it right three out of 10 times, but more often than not, you're gonna get screwed. So I'm not gonna sell now and hope to buy better at a better price. I've never done it with Palantir. I'm not gonna start now. My strategy, and it's out the open, I'm like an open book, is a dollar cost average, which means I buy Palantir at all times. But when the price target for me is below a certain threshold, then I'm doubling down. When the price target goes above that threshold, then I'm buying my regular amount. It's called a double DCA strategy, which is something we teach on our academy at patreon.com forward slash Tom Nash. We teach you how to do your DCF, how to look at balance sheets, and how to dollar cost average smart without being an idiot trying to time the market. Now, I think the bigger question here is what's next for Palantir, because that's the one thing I'm interested in as a long-term investor. And I think the real question is not specifically what would be the price of Palantir in six months. I think the more interesting question for me as kind of a lifer in the stock is when is this company going to get that Tesla moment? When is it going to get that NVIDIA moment? Because it's definitely headed to the right place, but when does it happen? Now, look, I look at this uh, in a holistic approach, and I, and I see Palantir as a company kind of developing this whole new niche quietly under the radar. If you look beyond the numbers, you'll notice that the U.S. commercial business is growing at a 70% rate. Now, the U.S. commercial business literally means U.S. enterprise software, which is the best software market in the world. That market is giving them 70% growth. They're literally taking it over slowly. Now, 
if you understand AIP, uh, which is the AI platform Palantir, it is absolutely transforming the way people do business. Right now, we're looking at a 500% growth in the amount of boot camps and pilots Palantir is launching with AIP with potential prospects, with potential clients. And if you look at AIP, the AI platform of Palantir, what you're seeing is absolute insane feeding frenzy. They are at 500% growth in pilots and in boot camps with AIP. And once these new clients will go through the sales cycle of Palantir, which takes 6 to 12 months, we'll also see a huge impact on the revenue line as well for Palantir. Now, the sales cycle is something that needs to be talked about because a lot of people don't understand that, you know, getting a client from AIP doesn't mean that you have that revenue registered in the next quarter. That's not how it works. These things take time. They're a little bit slow to progress, but eventually you will see that. But as I mentioned before, once you see these numbers already reflected in the revenues, that's where the price already spikes. The smarter investors buy these things before the mass adoption happens, before people understand what's going on. I think there's an enormous market share here for Palantir with AIP, because this is a business not just with better margins, with better scaling, and in which Palantir totally dominates like no other company. It's just the sector in itself is highly sticky, but also... It is the future. It is the way industry is going to work in the next 10 years. And Palantir might not be the only company in this sector. I get it. We talked a lot about potential competition. But it's definitely shaping up to be one of the top three companies. Imagine that now you're looking at one of the four cloud providers before cloud was a thing. It's the same thing with AIP. They're probably one of the top three companies to deliver a product like this. Maybe one of the top two companies. Let's assume they're going to be just as big as, let's say, Salesforce. A B2B software you know, $200 billion, Palantir is currently trading at one-fourth of that valuation, which should give you kind of an understanding of how big Palantir can be just on the basis of some limited assumptions, not even going too far with this whole taking over the world thing. And just to kind of give you an idea of how fast Palantir is growing, look, Palantir just did 100 new deals worth a million more in 2023. That's double than what they had in 2022. That trend is only going to continue. And now let's talk about my price targets for Palantir. And those are based on a few assumptions. Assumption number one, legacy business versus the new commercial clients. I spoke about it in my previous video. The video will be linked below. And I've explained to you there's a huge difference between the commercial clients of the past and the new AIP clients. This is bigger TAM, bigger, much more insane margins, more scalable, a lot more stickier. This is the new business of Palantir, and the margins in that business are going to be insane. Now, number two, if you look at price to sales of Palantir, which is the right metric to look at a company like that, not PE, you look at CrowdStrike, you look at Datadog, you look at Cloudflare, you look at Zscaler, you look at all these companies, they are more expensive than Palantir. And by the way, those are great companies, but none of them have the massive potential, the upside, the ceiling of Palantir, which is almost endless. And of course, number three is the profitability, the margins of Palantir. We've never seen anything like this, and it's hard to see because it's just starting out, but it's absolutely going crazy right now. Revenues are going up 20%. Operating expenses, the same. SGNA comes down. Margins, 84% gross margin. We have cash from operations at 50%. Net income grows 100% in a year. Operating expenses, the same. And of course, number four, the balance sheet, the cleanest we've ever seen. $3.7 billion in cash, no debt, and four times more assets than liabilities. Clean as a whistle. And with that, let's go to my model in which I use Stock MVP, which is a software that we built for retail investors to do their own stock research, to do their own DCFs, their own valuations. Stock-MVP.com, get it right now, test it for a week for free. And in my model in Stock MVP, my DCF gives me a current valuation right now of $29.67. It's something you can go ahead and do in your models in Stock MVP. And also my five-year target is based on three options. The bear option for the next five years is $66. The middle ground for five years is $150. And my optimistic is $233 for the next five years. And it doesn't mean that Palantir won't get to $500. I'm just giving you my five-year price targets. Bare, middle, optimistic. That's it. Now, if you want to learn more about Palantir, if you want to educate yourself on this company, we have an incredibly active Discord community with Palantir rooms dedicated to talking every single day about the stock. We have it right now open to anybody. Anybody that wants to join, you don't have to join my Patreon. It's free. It's open to anybody. Discord.gg slash Tom Nash. Join today. Join our wonderful community. We would love to have you there. We'll see you there in just a second.